They are the Fighting Wilcox Brothers, and they are about to make history in Brantford. Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show, coming up! Very excited to have you here today and very excited for this program. Here we go. We have an historic boxing card coming up. Eight bouts, November 4th, 2022 at the Brantford Civic Center. A classic boxing company, Wilcox Brothers Promotion. Stephen Wilcox, Rothway, 23 and 3. Jesse Wilcox, junior middleweight, 16 and 0. Bradley Wilcox, a lightweight who's 9 and 0. Spencer Wilcox, a lightweight who's 4 and 0. Their trainer, father, is Bob Wilcox. The promoter of this event is Mark Irwin, and we're pleased to have the brothers on the program. Welcome to the show, guys. Good to have you here. Thanks well, for, thank having you for having us. Okay, I'm going to start with you, Stephen. You are the eldest brother at 32 years of age, 23, 3, and 1 with six knockouts. You will be in the co main event. Uh, how did you get the nickname Piranha? It's kind of like a, we were um, it, we were at the gym and you know I I was just ready to uh, to make my I was decision to uh, turn professional you know and everyone got I, I was the first one from from our gym to uh, to turn pro you know everyone got excited and all like oh man we we got to uh, you know you need you need a nickname you need a nickname you know everyone's just you know over excited for his pro and stuff and then. Uh, I don't know. I just got like an obsession with piranhas. I went out one day, uh, just bought a whole bunch of uh, piranhas and stuff like that. And then one of the boys that were at the gym, I was feeding them the little uh, the goldfish, and uh, you know they were kind of attacking attacking the fish, but not like taking a big chomp out of them. And then the one that uh, I remember was speaking to me, he goes. Steve, you kind of fight like a, a, the piranhas kind of eat like you, like the way you uh, you you fight. You don't just go for the kill. You you know, little bite, little bite, little bite, and then then the attack, and then and then uh, that's how I got my name. I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, piranha, beautiful. So you're fighting uh, a guy named Francisco Martinez of, of Mexico. It's a ten round, uh, a ten hundred. You're in the co-main event. It's for the IBC yeah. Junior Welterweight title. Martinez is 11 and 3, six knockouts. His nickname is Tyson. What do you know about him? Uh, to be honest, I, I haven't really watched too much of him because um, the, uh, there was there was one one video. Um, he seems he seems like a shorter guy, I believe. I don't know. Well, I don't know. We're kind of mixed up because the one thing it says he's five nine, but when I see the opponent, he's fighting. His opponent's only uh, five, six, or something like that, and they look like the same height. But uh, but I don't know. At, at this um, this stage of my career, you know, the coaches, you know, everyone's saying, you know, but when, let's not worry about our opponent. Let's worry about the, um, you know, putting all of our our tools together and uh, worry about what we got to do. Well, we he's, have he's in Mexico. Sorry, go finish that thought. Um, like the, the the video that we we ha I have seen of him, you know, he's seems like he just you know very typical Mexican uh, style, especially against me. You know, I'm I'm a taller, uh, tall, super lightweight, so you know we know he's not going to come out there and try and you know try and box with me. He's gonna he's gonna come forward, and you know we just want to. Uh, like my coach already said yesterday, you know, we're not, we're not going to look for the knockout. We're going to, uh, we're going to dissect this guy. You know, well, long, that's long dissecting is perfect. Dissecting is perfect for the piranha. Now we have some video of you uh, working out here, working the pads, looking pretty good. I might, I might add. Here we go. Uh, what's tell me about you? you you've got, you got three losses on your resume. Actually, between the four yeah. brothers, the only guys have only have three losses. I noticed that. Two of those losses have come by split decision. The other was was by unanimous decision. So you easily could could be uh, 
25 and one. Tell us about uh, you know about those lo- that those losses and that one loss you lost by the unanimous decision, and uh, you know how that compares to all your wins. Uh, yeah, you know the the one uh, the one loss we had was was in Mexico. We went down and it was a long uh, long story, but it it started raining and and stuff like that, and and I slipped on the canvas and and they counted as a knockout or sorry a, a knockdown. We we still thought you know we came um, with the victory, but you know they gave it to the hometown guy. Uh, you know that was our sin, but then we fought him again. Uh, four or five months later in Hamilton and, and, uh, and defended my belt against him and, and won every round, knocked him down twice. Um, and my other split, my other split decision loss was a, I think that was in my second, second year as a, as a pro, I fought a tough, a tough guy from Mexico lost again, uh, split decision and many, many people even, you know, a few of a few of the uh other oh, ontario hi. Um, say hi emma um, hi emma the other officials you know a lot of people thought you know i i should have been victorious about that but you know what we, we we learned from them we learned from them and you know we just we move forward and you know we're at the stage now where you know this is my final <laughs> You know my final lap and we, we, we just you know anything that gets in our way we gotta you know have, have no regrets and just make sure our hand hand is raised let's talk about those wins though that 20 out of those 23 victories what was your favorite uh, victory out of those your biggest win if you will uh two i have um probably my first first title um I think that was 2014 or something like that. It went down to New Brunswick. Um, it was for the Canadian title, and it just we knew we were fighting. We knew we were fighting, and, I, and then I got home from training, and my dad goes, "Hey, Bob, I got some uh, got some good news." I'm like, "Oh, what's that?" And he's like, "Or no, we got some news about your fight." And as soon as he said that, I, I'm like, "Oh man," thinking, "Okay, it got canceled, or you know, something something happened." And he goes, you're fighting for a title. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, I didn't believe him. He goes, no, you're, you're um, uh, Tyler phone tonight, and uh, we're gonna uh, put the Canadian. They're gonna put the Canadian title on. You. So that that was a big. And then so we went down to New Brunswick, and uh, and and um, fought for the Canadian super lightweight title, and. And won that, and then uh, that was a good ach- achievement, just because you know it was I was only boxing professional for a year and a half, and you know we had that, or not even, yeah, yeah, about a year and a half. That was one of our, you know, short-term goals was you know winning a Canadian title, but you know I didn't didn't think it was going to come that uh, that quick. And then uh, the second. Big achievement I had was when I won the North American title in uh, in Hamilton, in front of my hometown and stuff. That was a good, you know, highlight of my career for sure. This is uh, this is historic what you guys are doing. I want to move on, to Jesse, to talk about. Uh, tell me, Jesse, what? Where did the Rock come from? The Rock with a C. Uh, it's kind of the same story as Steven. Uh... But we were on a we were on a trip to Sudbury fighting, and uh, we were just making fun of each other. It was me, Josh O'Reilly, another professional, um, Steven, Oops. and then uh, probably a couple of my other brothers. And we were driving up there, and you know it's a far drive, so we were getting bored, and we were doing uh just making fun of each other. Just my dad was joining in on it, and uh, I forget what Steven said, but set me off and uh we ended up getting in like a little tussle in the back of the um van and then uh as we were driving um my friend josh was like you know you're kind of like a rock when you uh 
when you get when once you start rolling down the hill, like there's no stopping. You just keep going till you hit the bottom. And then, <laughs> that's just and then the Rock used to be my favorite fighter or favorite wrestler, so it worked out all right. Can you and smell what the Rock is doing? That's it. Hey, uh, so you're talking. Yeah, you're talking about Josh Dubs O'Reilly. His nickname is Dubs. That's yeah. Too. Yeah. So uh, you're 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 sixteen and zero uh, with a couple of draws, ten KOs. Uh, let's talk about um, your your biggest win today. Well, my biggest win is probably it's probably that fight actually. This one, um, uh, it was my first title, and. Uh, that that opponent had a, a pretty decent record, and he he'd been he'd gone the distance with a lot of um, fighters, but um, I caught him clean in the first round, and then I just um, finished him quick, and it just felt really good to do in front of the hometown, and like all my friends were there watching, and uh, it was really fun after, and so it's kind of like it stuck with me for a long time. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, buddy. That that, uh, that left hand right there finished him off. That was really yeah. nice. That was Armando Garcia. Uh, yes. So so, what do you have planned then for for uh, Ivan Alvarez from Mexico, who's uh, he's been around the block, forty nine fights, yeah. thirty four years old. Uh, what are you expecting from Alvarez? Uh, you, you can tell he's a veteran. Um, yeah, he's got a lot of a lot of fights. Um, He's been he's been in there with some pretty uh, pretty good names and gone the distance with them and um, I think all all in uh, in the end it, it it doesn't really matter you know how good he's done before um, uh, I just focus on like what Steven said is is being a better me and uh, for this training camp I've, I've trained very hard and I think I am um i am elite uh, like top top in the world like i could get with those guys and i can hang with those guys so um this is just for me the the next step and uh i'm gonna do my best to make easy work of it and if it's gonna be a, a hard night well i'm gonna still get my hand raised at the end of the night so it's just uh just just focus on winning and and uh, I've, I've done everything right so far in the training camp. Uh, obviously, uh, you get your little bumps and bruises uh, start going into the training camp. But now that it's finishing off, I feel um, I feel like uh, amazing. So, well, speaking of training camp, uh, we got a picture of uh, you that was posted by Steve Molitor on Twitter. You and Evan yeah. Gillard, uh He posted, "Be working with these two savages for their fight November 4th. If you want the ultimate, yeah. you got to be willing to pay the ultimate price. What do you know? What do you learn here from a two-time two world champ like Steve, Canadian kid Molitor? Well, you know, it, it, it's 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 kind of a, a an awesome like uh, thing I got going on this training camp because uh, I got RG, uh, my coach from Toronto, and I got Steve, and you know, Steve's kind of giving like uh, like. RG comes from a fighting family as well, the Grant brothers. Right. And then uh, Steve also comes from a fighting family. And they just, they both know what it's like to have brothers um, in the in the ring, like watching them fight, and then brothers outside of the ring that, you know, you guys get, you, you have someone to turn to after. Um, but Steve is a really good uh, asset in the sense that it's like he knows what it's like to be at the top and he knows what it takes to get to the top. And, uh, you know, it's just more so with him. It's been like a fine tuning all the stuff that, you know, I already know how to do and the stuff that it's, it's that I've learned in the 20 years I've been boxing. And, uh, he just kind of reminds you of like, Make sure you do this every day. Make like every day. He's always, he's always make sure. Um, you know, I'm staying on top of all parts of boxing and not just focusing on, um, you know, 
the boxing end of it, like the, the, the diet, make sure your diet's clean. He, he's a really very, very, very smart um, fighter. And having somebody that has been to the top kind of guiding you along the way with your coach and both working together and, you know, it's been uh it's been probably my my best camp so far. I feel the best I have in a long, long, long time. So it sounds it sounds like an awesome camp, that's for sure. Okay, let's move on to Spencer, yeah. youngest of the group, uh, four and oh, 22 years old, three knockouts. Uh, uh, this is going to be a six round fight for you. Uh, you're with Pro Bellum. Tell us about the that that relationship. Oh, it's uh I've got nothing to uh nothing sour or anything to say, only good things. Uh it started back in March twenty fifth was my first fight with them and uh signed a nice contract so we'll be together for a few years and from this point I've had nothing but uh positive things to say about them and uh good good really good solid group of people and uh the even just allowing me to fight on this card and the local cards lately is, uh, I think it goes to show the type of people they are because they actually care about improvements and uh, building the fighters instead of just throwing you on uh, any of the big shows that they do host, right? It's uh, You have to earn your way up, and I like that aspect. Well, you know, you've earned it as, as an amateur. You're a four-time national champ. I couldn't find a nickname for you. Is there one that I'm missing somewhere? No, I, I don't have a nickname. I just, uh, I don't know. It just hasn't came yet. I uh, I don't know. Just, I guess, just the name. Remember the name, not the not the nickname. That's all. I don't really know, right? I just, you know, they come naturally, right? And uh, it just Perfect. hasn't. Well, we, my son Spencer, we called him the, the dispenser. That was good. Oh, <laughs> it was the, dispenser, the dispenser. Because yeah. he dispenses the people. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, you're fighting a guy named Isaac uh, Isaac Castan from Mexico. Uh, got some round, rounds under him. He's uh, five, four, and one. This will be a six rounder for you. Uh, have your fights all been four rounders so far? Uh, my last fight was supposed to be six round, six rounds, and then we got a nice body shot in, nice liver shot the first round, and uh, we couldn't beat the count. But yeah, so technically. That was my first six rounds, but uh, we obviously didn't go the distance. Yeah, those liver shots tend to, you know, to put a, to put a stop to those uh, to those six to those longer fights. Um, so we got yeah, some busy. Yeah. You, this is from you making your pro debut. Uh, it's a fight that ended early. You know, nice. Uh, you mentioned at the time the nice body work. Of course, your body work was what you focused on, which set him up for the knockout. Would that be the game plan this time around? Uh, you know, go to the body and then, you know, as they say, when you take away the body, the head will fall. Yeah, for sure. I think that's the biggest uh, adapting uh, change we've done since going pro was really sitting in on that uh, that body work. And I think it's made a world of a difference. Do you know what I mean? Now after three, four rounds, you can, even in sparring, you can see the change in people. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? It slows down their footwork. It slows down their train of thought. And uh, I'm really glad we made that adjustment because uh, some guys, you can hit them with anything to the head, right? And uh, they won't fold. But no matter who you are in the world, if you got somebody hitting you in the stomach constantly, it doesn't matter how in shape you are. It, it can make you take a knee a lot faster than a headshot. What's it like to fight on the same car to your, as your big brother's? It's really cool. I haven't fought even in amateurs. I think the last time I ever fought on the same card as someone was uh, Mark Irwin actually did a pro-am card a few mm -hmm. years back. And me and Jesse fought on the same card. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot different, right? Like, uh, especially it being pro. I've never fought on the same card as Steven, but I fought on the same card as Brad. And uh, it's really cool. I like it. It'll be obviously it'll be a little stressful night, but uh, because nobody likes seeing their siblings fight, we like seeing each other win. But no one likes actually Ooh. watching the fight, right? It's quite stressful. But uh, I can't imagine the feeling after. I'm very excited for Friday night when those fights are done to all celebrate, have some junk food, and uh, you know what I mean, be together. There's no better feeling than 
I find when you win a fight, going to see your family is my favorite part. Now imagine when four of us win and win dominantly knocking people out. I think uh, we're all going to showcase our skills good this time. And uh, I think it'll just be the icing on the cake when we all smash some people together. <laughs> it's got one at a time. Well, this is, I mean, really, this is, this is going to be fun for sure. I want to bring in uh, Bradley, the, the truth, Wilcox. So Bradley, oh. tell us, uh, we talked about the next. Where, where does the truth come from? Uh, well, actually, it comes from I don't I don't know if everybody explained their nicknames but, uh, from Josh O'Reilly uh, when I when right. I was I, uh, Dubs. yeah Dubs I had to fight one of my close friends because I was finally moving up in uh, weight class and then uh, people were thinking that he was gonna win uh, Josh kept saying. Oh, we, we, we lost your audio there for a second, Bradley. I don't know what happened, but uh, uh, yeah, I know that you, you mentioned you got the nickname from Dubs. Okay, so uh, you're fighting uh, a guy. Well, your record, by the way, 9-0, and four knockouts. Uh, this is going to be a six-round fight against Carlos Diaz from Chile, who's 8-2-1. Uh, what do you know about Carlos Diaz, if you know anything at all? Uh, it's always hard. Okay, Bradley, we're, we're, we're having a hard time hearing you. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to disconnect from the feed, get, get cleared out of your screen, and then and then put and then and then sign back in, and we'll uh, we'll be able to hear you a little bit better. Um, so. You guys talked about it earlier. Uh, uh, you know, you, you, you touched on it earlier. Uh, I think it was you, Jesse. Uh, you know, having RD and the Grant brothers. I mean, there's to be been some good, uh, grand, uh, good uh, fighting brothers in the past that we've seen. We've seen, uh, you know, Leon and Michael Spinks, and we saw Roger and Ray Leonard, and and Otis and Howard, RD Grant, the Grant brothers. But never four. This is something that's different. Uh, what? Uh, this is this is unique. This is different. How? What does that feel like, Jesse? Um, you know, it's 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 awesome because, uh, like like Spencer said, uh, it's really it's it's stressful. It's super stressful watching my brothers fight. Um, sometimes it's like when I know, like for example, when Stephen was fighting for his NABA title, it it was like the hardest the hardest night for me because. You no, know, all I see what he trains. I see what he does. I, you know, I watch. Uh, I'm in the ring sparring with him. I, I know when he's doing good in uh, training. I know when he's not doing the best in training. And, uh, you know, so as much as like it's, you know, it's him in the ring. It feels like it's gonna be. It, it feels like half the time I'm in there too, and the, there's nothing I could do except for scream and yell and all this stuff. But when we're all fighting on the same card, I think it's going to be best that we just kind of, you know, obviously you're going to want to know how'd you do. You know, I fought with Steven and Bradley before, but not with Spencer. But I know when Bradley came back to the, to the ring or back to the corner or sorry, back to the change room after. It was like, how did you do? And, you know, somebody told me it was a close fight, but he got it. And it was like. You know, right away I felt I felt a, an instant relief, and then I got ready. I got warmed up after that. So it's kind of like it's stressful, but at the same time, when they're when they win, it's it's less stressful because I don't have to watch it this time. Like I get to just kind of let them come back to the corner, tell me that they or come back to the change room, tell me they win, and then it, a relief comes in, and then the next one will come up. And I think it's going to be. Um, it's going to be really good for uh, Hamilton Boxing, really good for boxing in Canada. And, uh, like, you know, maybe one day we'll get my fifth brother, Sheldon, on here, and then uh, or it'll be uh, even bigger. So, All right. So we got Bradley back. Bradley, uh, we, uh, welcome back, buddy. I, I think we'll be able to hear you this time. Uh, you're a four-time Canadian amateur champ. You know, like like your brother Spencer, uh, 
Uh, we have some uh, action from your last fight against uh, Guadalupe Acosta, who looks like a pretty good, uh, pretty tough dude in this fight. But uh, you had landed some real nice left hooks. He obviously gave up a reach advantage. Uh, what was it like fighting this guy? Uh, it it was my first uh, eight round fight actually, and we did we actually had no videos on this guy, and then kind of at the weigh-ins, I was shocked when I because I'm pretty I'm pretty tall for 135 pounds. Then I remember like sizing him up, and I was like, "Oh God, this guy's actually pretty <laughs> tall." And then uh, it was—I I remember going back to my dad in the second round, going, "Oh God, I can't keep eating these right hands." Because first thing my dad usually asks is, "This guy hit hard. Are you okay?" And then he goes, starts giving advice, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm fine, but I don't think I can keep eating these right hands like, like all all night, kind of thing." And then I tapped it, and then. Took it from there. But you wore him down. I was. What was, what was the key to the victory for you? Uh, I think it was just staying complete when getting hit. It was my it was my first eight round fight, and it was my first time ever actually getting cut. I was I was cut on the top of the head. I don't know if it was from like an elbow or something, but uh, it was definitely a good experience. It was my first eight round fight, and it went the distance. And it it was nice, like. <laughs> As much as when I was in there, it was it was hard for me to read if I was like winning or not. But it was like I remember looking outside the ring and seeing my brother Steven, like kind of like telling me what to do. And like it was nice, like everybody was getting really into the fight, and it really like kind of, yeah, there it, there was like it was a good good fight. Uh, you know, uh, Bradley, I, I noticed that you're a, a civil engineer. Uh, is that the, the career route after boxing? Yeah, so I actually, I, I work for the city of Hamilton now uh, in, in the roads department. Uh, they, like I graduated from civil engineer, uh, but I, I'm, I'm not, I'm a roads technical inspector for the city of Hamilton. And... I, I'm I do have that job right now in Hamilton, so it's it's tough, but it's definitely the reward's going to be a lot better because I can I'm trying to balance both. Well, uh, let's go back. Let's go back to to, to Big Brother now, Stephen. Um, you uh, when, when you guys get together and you're sparring, who who is it that uh, that uh, your dad would have to say cool your jets? Who who, who is who is the toughest guy to settle down in those sparring sessions? Oh, definitely, uh, definitely Jesse. People like from other gyms or whatever, when they come and and watch us spar and, and watch us spar, everyone says the same uh, the same thing. I think it's just because we we know each other so well. And like I always say to my dad, like we could probably spar each other with our eyes closed because you know we've been sparring thousands of rounds of years for the last 20 years with each other but everybody when you know when they when they come down and they, and they see a spar that one always the same same uh comment uh um you guys you guys could sell out uh you guys could sell out cops call seam you guys can sell out the air canvas center you know just, just um but it's kind of funny i remember the one i think it was my last um I think it was probably my last title, uh, my last fight when, uh, <clears throat> my last f title fight when I fought at the Royal York, um, we, I was going into the 12th round or 10th round and I was pretty, um, like, you know what I mean? Confident going into that, going into that last round. And I just, I remember RG looking at me and saying, you know, you got three more minutes and, and then, uh, you know, them belts are yours. You're taking them belts home. And then, you know, my, the guy, we, we could tell, but, you know, he was getting, you know, he was slowing down, he was getting fatigued. And my dad, I remember, he, he, I remember like smiling when he said it. My dad looked, he goes, let's finish this, you know, finish strong, finish strong. He, he looked at me, he goes, pretend it's Jesse in that, uh, you know, th this round. He goes, go out and fight, fight like it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's Jesse. And I remember, you know, this is, in the middle of the fight, I remember me and both RG like, you know, looked at each other and just kind of smiled. But, yeah. 
So yeah, we definitely, yeah. and I, I know how to get, I know how to get uh, under Jesse's, Jesse's uh, skin pretty well too. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Jesse, is that would you would you concur that you're the guy who uh, has to has to be told to settle down? Yeah, the rock. Yeah, right? the rock rolling down. He, the he's probably the he's probably like like I could spar somebody. They could have their hands down the whole time, and it doesn't bother me. Sometimes when when I'm sparring Steven, I could be beating him. I could be beating him up that day, and he'll just stick his tongue out or do something stupid and it just gets under my skin i i don't know how i, I i've been told to control it like forever and I, and with him i just i honestly i can't <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how to explain it <laughs> so no bradley uh, i want to bring you back in here for a second i, I want to talk about uh who this fight card is dedicated to and, and uh, tell us about that uh, so, so throughout the years, uh, my family has put on like any like little stag and does, dances, uh, a lot of uh, events in in the in my brother's name, my brother Robbie, who passed away from cancer when he was uh, seven years old, nineteen ninety five. Uh, but I, we actually, I had the idea just probably two months before COVID happened. And uh, I thought I said, I said to my dad and mom, I said, dad, mom, why aren't we like, I, I want to open up a Robbie Wilcox foundation, like a nonprofit organization. And, uh, and then I opened it up. And then of course, COVID happened. So that slowed everything down. And now we're fine. And then when we were talking about doing this show, I thought, you know what, this is a perfect opportunity to kind of let everybody see and know what's going on. So hopefully we can uh, kind of get that rolling from after this show. And uh, this show, uh, the Robbie Wilcox Foundation is going to be dedicating and like the proceeds will be going towards Help a Child Smile, Brantford. That is awesome. That's awesome. Um, you guys, uh, I mean, you see what's happening in the boxing world. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pose this question to uh, to Spencer. Um, Jake Paul, good for box boxing, bad for boxing, or has your opinion changed? This is, is this just gone along? What do you, what are your thoughts? Uh, like anything in the world, right? There's the positives, there's the negatives. Yeah, he's bringing the eyes to the sport. The one thing I do condone him for is that uh, uh, I like his whole aspect on creating a fighters union i actually uh i actually can't argue against that i think that's a great idea and fighters health care that you can pay into uh hopefully he lives up to it and does it but if he does it and you can't complain about that any fighter that complains about that don't have respect for the sport i think because i think what's what boxing lacks when it comes to hockey basketball and stuff is they have a union that'll back them up when there's injuries etc but uh and the one thing I don't mind about him is, you know what, he does, he is a bit of a clown, this, that, this, that. But you know what, the guy clearly trains hard. When I was in Vegas just recently, I was actually uh, talking to some people that are involved in his camps and stuff like that. And they said, you can't knock his hustle. They said he trains harder than most of the world champions. So no matter who you are, no matter what your attitude is, if you, if you take the sport serious and train like that, you can't... Uh, you have to give the respect in that aspect. But, yeah, like, he's got a shtick, right? And who he's fighting, it, at the end of the day, like him or not, what he's doing is smart. He's making millions in his pocket to fight famous people. You know what I mean? People can say what they want. He's selling the fights. He knows he's not going to fight in a world, world-class fighter. And uh, 10 out of 10 people, if you ask me right now to get paid $10 million to fight Anderson Silva, I'm going to do it. If you say right. you wouldn't do it, you're a liar. You know what I mean? And uh, so originally, I really didn't like his persona and what he was about. But uh, lately, it's like if when you all antics and, and uh, uh, how do I say, showmanship aside, I, I don't think it's bad necessarily for the sport. You know what I mean? I think some of the stuff he says I don't agree with. But, A, there's not a lot of people that are fighting for a fighter's union and 
higher pay grade and uh, stuff like that. So you can't, and he is taking it serious. Like you, like what I said was I was talking to people involved in his camp. He's training three times a day. He's got, uh, apparently he's really clean. He takes that aspect of the he's sparring serious people. And so, you know what? Uh, it sounds like he takes the sport a lot more serious than people who have been involved in it their whole life. You know, just because you sign a paper and say he's a lot more professional than a lot of the professionals, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So, yeah, some of the stuff he says, it's a stick. I think it's just to draw attention. And uh, I don't see no difference between him and a guy like Conor McGregor, to be honest. And uh, I think he's a lot selfless than Conor McGregor. For instance, when his last fight got canceled, he still paid everybody their full purses. Ten out of ten promoters aren't doing that. You know what I mean? The show got canceled and the fighters still got their purses. So I think I think a lot of what he does is for show and to draw attention. I think deep down, I think he's pretty good for the sport when it comes to what what he's actually trying to do. Okay, Stephen, I'm going to put close this. Oh, he's gone. Stephen's gone. Uh, so my, I'll, I'll put, yeah, there's, he's back. There he is. Stephen, I'm going to pose this question to you and Emma. Um, so uh, you, you've been around the block. What do you think? Yeah. Is, is Jake Paul is Jake Paul the real deal? Does this guy have a chance to do something in, in the ring? Emma, what do you think? Uh, I, like, I'm kind of. At first, I thought it was like a. Uh, it was bad what he's doing, but you know what? Like, he's he's bringing a lot of uh, like pay per views. He's bringing a lot of kids that uh, you know, kids that would never watch boxing. Um to uh to you know to, to to watch it and then now they're watching uh different fights like i mean the one time we were training a uh this was a couple years ago we, we were training a hockey team and everyone was talking about oh yeah i'm watching the fights and i'm watching the fights now i finally spoke up and these are hockey kids they go what what fight are you guys watching because it was a sunday they're like oh jake uh i don't even remember who it was it was when he fought the basketball player oh yeah um, yeah, yeah. Rob, Rob. Yeah, no. Rob. Yeah, yeah, he knocked him out pretty good or something. But um, yeah, yeah, good, good punch. Yeah, but no, I, I think you know what I mean. But some, like Spencer says, some of the stuff's a little, uh, you know, far. Like you know, he, he talks a lot, and I think it's it's kind of like disrespectful for him. I wouldn't say disrespectful because I mean, I guess you gotta you gotta be confident that you can. You know, but but you know, call, calling out all the uh, you know world champions, saying you know, you know, you can beat Canelo Alvarez and, and all that stuff. I mean, you gotta you gotta know know your limits, right? But yeah, but yeah, I I, I say so. Okay, so so on fight night, you guys are sharing the same dressing room. Uh, I'll I'll, I'll post this with you. Uh, Bradley, who controls the music? Uh, who chooses the music? Well, in in, in my dad, no, 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 no. Be all <laughs> no. Uh, I think everybody kind of gets in their own zone. Everybody has their own uh, kind of music that they like listening to. To be honest, usually I'll listen to me personally. I'll listen to a couple serious songs, and then I'll usually usually listen to one that brings me back to like when I was. A, younger just to kind of get me in a happy mood and then i usually listen to a serious one and then i take my headphones off but I, there's not really a speaker because in the back the like the commissions there and stuff like that so there's lots going on there's people going in the ring then there's some people just arriving so there isn't much speakers but everybody kind of has their own music so you feel any pressure, uh, Spencer? You, I'm assuming you're going to be the first one out, out of the gate in, in the show. Are you feeling pressure, pressure to uh, to put on a good show to, uh, to as a lead into the your brothers? Honestly, uh, boxing to me was growing up like honestly, I, it was very normal to me. I thought a lot of kids do it, so like I'm not even just saying it. I've never felt too much pressure in boxing, man. Even in like the highest stages and the amateurs and stuff, I. I didn't really care to think about that type of stuff when I'm about to fight because I am one of those people that genuinely, like, I do like to fight. Like, I do like boxing. You know what I mean? So 
I get excited more or less. And uh, no, I don't feel no pressure at all. They should feel some pressure though, because they're gonna have to. Uh, they're gonna have to try and upstage me after I smash this guy. So they should feel the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, well, let's I, talk I, about I, that, Jesse. Sorry, go, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah uh, go ahead, Jesse. You know, I'll, not, I'll fight my guy. I'll, I'll, you know, I, I plan on knocking him out, and then um, if Spence wants, we can go in after too. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to ask you: go, Does this ever happen? You guys are like, you have, have you ever had like a royal rumble? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we were when we were younger, we did it a lot more. But uh, yeah. I think now that everyone's mature and stuff, the only two dummies that usually go at it are me and Jesse now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, like every, yeah, every, other people are all parents and stuff now. They have to be mature. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> me, and Je- <laughs> me, me and Jesse can still scrap uh, at it pretty good, but. Uh, no, going back to it, none of us should feel pressure that night because you know what? Even though we're we're all there together, but at the end of the night, win or lose, we got a we got a beautiful mother on the inside and out who's gonna come home. We can come home to and she's gonna uh, welcome us with open hands. May it be we lose, win, she don't care, right? So I think that's the biggest aspect. I don't think a single one of us should feel any pressure because this is what we've done our whole life. Uh, this this it it's one of those fights where you know what yeah it is history this that this that but at the end of the day when it comes to the fight none of that means anything we got the support system we got the team we've all trained proper we've been together this whole training camp and uh i know damn well my brother steven's gonna go out there smash somebody my brother bradley's gonna go out there smash somebody my brother jesse's gonna go out there smash somebody there's no doubt in my mind about that so there's i don't think a single one of us should feel an ounce of pressure there's no such thing as pressure when you've been prepared What's uh, mom going to make for dinner for the celebratory dinner on Sunday? Oh, pizza. Yeah, hopefully. I pizza. actually I just found out last night that we got a sponsorship. Uh, I would like to shout them out because I heard we got a pizza sponsorship, and that literally made my night. And then I found out my favorite dessert's cannolis, and then I found out they're known for their cannolis. So I messaged them, and I said, listen, I know you're sponsoring the show. I said, this is amazing. Pizza and cannolis. I, I did some of my own. So mom right. don't have what's to the cook. Company? What's, the, what's the company? Uh, I can't even... It's Maria's Pizza. Maria's, Maria's pizza. pizza. All right. There I you go. I looked up the review. And in the hammer. No, in Brantford. In Brantford. We, we try to keep everything okay. local. Keep it local. Add, add it, boy. Okay, so listen, guys. This is, uh, I mean, you. this is fantastic. A historic night that... You know, the four Wilcox brothers are fighting and uh, maybe shelled down the road. So who knows? But uh, you've, you've got a great undercard here. you got Evan Kid Chrome, uh, uh, Gillard, who is who's undefeated, five time Kennedy amateur champion on the card. Evan's half a heck of a fighter, kid from Oshawa. I've seen him fight before as an amateur. Uh, Lucas, Prince, Body, 12 and 0, 11 knockouts. He's going to he's gonna be fighting five rounds. I mean, the. Lucas body can fight, man. This is this is awesome. Uh, Brantford's own uh, Jennifer Williams making her debut at four rounds, and another Brantford fighter, Darren Fletcher, uh, four rounds. Uh, what do what are you thinking about this undercard? What sticks out for you? Uh, let's start with you, Jesse. Uh, I I got uh, I train with Evan um, when I'm with Steve. Some some days, sometimes during the week, he's there with us. Um, so you know, and and Evan's always been like a, a a a fighter that when I'm when I'm at, when I'm at boxing tournaments and he's there, he always puts a smile on my face. He's one of the funniest kids I know. So, uh, but I watch but I watched him, I watched him training, I watched him sparring, and you know, uh, he's looking very very good. Uh, Darren Fletcher, you know, whenever we need some sparring or something, you know, he's always there for us or, or we'll help him out vice versa kind of thing. Uh, so I, I, I'd like to see him, I'd like to see him get a win. He deserves it. Uh, he, he's, he's had a couple of fights where I've been there that he should have won. And then, um, Lucas, you know, Lucas has been, I've, I've been on a few trips with him as an amateur. Um, uh, he, he's a very good fighter. Uh, 
him and Steven were sparring during this camp. So uh, I actually, and Spencer too, actually. So, you know, it's, it's nice that uh, everybody that's on the card, you know, we get to kind of uh, deal with a little bit and, and, you know, you know, as much as you're sparring and you're working together, you know, it's, it's, it's good, good to hang out. And uh, they're all, they're all good people. And, you know, I, I hope everyone um, that is there on the card on the fourth uh, wins um, that's supposed to. Yeah, right. like the, 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 the last two weeks, right. I think the entire card's been training at the gym. So that's a pretty cool feeling too. I found that uh, very cool. When do you see that? Like literally the, the entire card that uh, Jennifer and Darren have basically lived at the gym the past two weeks, done all the sparring, everything here. So I think that just adds to the moment, right? So now you kind of – even though they're not directly teammates in the gym, you build the same thing with Evan, like with Evan and Lucas, we all grew up together. So it's uh, everyone training together right now. is really cool. It feels like uh, you're on the provincial team again. Yeah. Yeah. That is pretty awesome. Uh, you, you, Steve, you have a chance to spar with Lucas. He's looking pretty good. So, sorry, I keep muting the uh, thing because yeah, no, that no. wild, she thinks she's a dinosaur still. Still on Halloween. Um, yeah, yeah, we, I, we've all sparred um, Lucas uh, over the years. I did a little bit of work with him a few, uh, a few, a few weeks ago. But yeah, he's he's looking good. I think he's got another fight right after that. Um, we've, we've done some work with um, helping out with with Darren and and uh, what's her name, Jennifer. Jennifer. Yeah, because. She's having her de- she's having her debut, I think. Yeah, and um, but yeah, no, everyone's everyone's been looking good. Um, Evan, so you know, no, no, what's his name? The big guy, uh, Darren. Darren, yeah, he's he's done. Um, he's looking a lot better now. He's using his jab. You know, that's what we always try and uh, you know, they say boxing's like. Uh, like a one one man sport, but you know you just you try and you try and help each other out, and you know even though you are in there yourself, but you know they're they're not exactly club mates, but you know it would it would be great to see uh, to see Darren pull you know pull away with with the win. He's had a lot of tough fights over the last couple of years, you know going in as the B side. It'd be good to see him, you know, win in his hometown and stuff. So. Yeah, well, it's good. it's going to be a heck of a show. You talk about an individual sport, uh, but this, as you say, it is the bond of brothers, man. Here we go. Uh, this is a fight card you don't want to miss. You guys are amazing representatives of, of Steel Town Gym, and of course, the Hammer. And uh, let's hope you hammer out victories on Friday night at the Brantford Civic Center. We'll all be rooting for you. It's going to be a lot of fun. Are you be- and, uh, yeah, listen. I, I, I'm off to Egypt, believe it or not, on, on Thursday. Oh, yeah. so I can't be, but I'm going to get, I'll definitely see what we can do for highlights. I'm talking to Mark here, Irwin, the promoter, yeah. about getting some, uh, getting, I want to see what happens. This is, this is going to be fantastic. I definitely would be there. Uh, I will be at a card later on in, in the month uh, at the uh, Red Owl. I'll be doing a show there with okay. Steve Molitor. We're doing yeah, yeah. the blow by blow. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, it's great having you guys on here. I want to thank you for taking the time to join us. And, uh, you know, it was we, we were able to work around the technical difficulties and everything else. But, you know, this is the this is the world now. Look at what we can do, right? This is awesome. This yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank All right, guys. You, Joe, good luck. For having us. Thank you for, thank you for having us. And, uh, yeah. We'll see you thank soon. You. All right. Thank you. Thank you. More sports when we come back. Thanks, guys. More Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show coming up after the break. Sports Guests on Joe Tilly Sports receive a gift certificate from Classica Imports. Top of the line imported men's clothing. Check out the Classica Essential Collection now. Go to shopclassica.com. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, reuniting families. 
the only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life. Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. 1-855-787-2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. Joe Tilly Sports is brought to you by COSA. Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, providing a united voice for harness horse people racing at Ontario tracks. Check out your benefits today at COSAonline.com and check out COSA TV on Facebook and YouTube for all the latest harness news and live action updates. Live racing year round. Go to HPIBet.com for all your wagering options. Become a member today and your first bet is free. That's HPIBet.com. Do you know why that happened? You didn't fix your ball mark. The birds around here are very protective of the course, and when people don't take care of it, this is what happens. It's pretty simple. Just find your mark, fix it, and at least one other. Hey, look at the bright side. We're not up on the northern course. They've got bears and moose. Visit moregolf.ca today. You'll find everything a golfer could need from balls, gloves, and clubs to custom fitting opportunities and training gear. Go to moregolf.ca and get $20 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Just enter the promo code JT Sports. Now my Costa Swiss pick of the week. Last week I went out to Mohawk for the big race. Yes, the Breeders' Crown Open Pace. You know, I told you Bulldog Hanover would win and tattoo artists would complete the exact. Well, that's exactly what happened. More on the Breeders' Crown shortly. All right, this week I'm going to Thursday night's fifth race in Mohawk, part of the pop-up series for fillies and mares. How can I not take the number six horse, Maddie and Maggie, with Doug McNair driving. I also like the 267 Exacta and Trifecta box. For all the racing updates, visit COSA TV on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Go to hpibet.com for your wagering options. This is the Excellent Sports Adventure. Brought to you by Lycom. Well, it wasn't a road trip to remember for the Maple Leafs. They did get that one win in Winnipeg, but it wasn't good after that. A two-goal loss in Vegas. An OT setback in San Jose. Philip Deneau sets up Victor Arvidsson on the power play in L.A. The Kings tally twice with the extra man. They take it 4-2. Then in Anaheim, against the Ducks last overall. They took a 3-1 lead in the least, and then the least did. In the third, Alex Kerfoot sets up Kelly Arncroft shorthanded, but they couldn't hold it. Ever Zigris scoring twice, including the OT winner as the Ducks prevail 4-3. The Buds folks, they, they, they just seem lost right now. I'm thinking Sheldon Keefe could be on a very short leash. No Fred Van Vliet for the rapid attack, but... No problem against the Hawks. He did a great He's job on the pick up the slack. Late first half, Gary Trent Jr. gets open for the quarter three, giving the Raps the lead. GTJ with 21 points. Raps force a turnover. Here they come. Pascal Siakam dishes to Scotty Barnes for the and one. Barnes with a season high 21. This Pascal spinning inside. And the foul. Spicy P with 31 and 12 boards. The 30th time he's had 20 or more points and 10 plus rebounds in a game. That is a club record. Raps romp 139 to 109. Final weekend of the CFL's regular season. Alouettes and Argonauts on a spectacular day at BMO Field. It was a meaningless game, so all the backups got a shot. Dominique Davis is going to find Cole Speaker downfield. Speaker 
turns this into a 53-yard touchdown. Jeremiah Hadel returns the kickoff to open the second half of the Argos. Hadel slips away from a couple of tackles. He's going to take this 87 yards to the house. The Elves take it 33, 38-33. They'll host Hamilton in the Eastern semifinal. The winner gets the Argo. High Cats in Ottawa. Red Blacks winless at BC Place. Uh, still, Jamie Newman in for short yardage. He scored twice. High Cats win it 23-16. RB's 12th great home loss. Nathan Rourke back in the Lions lineup in Winnipeg. Had a decent return. His first game action since August. The Canadian completed 7 of 11 passes. Zach Kalaros, nice play action fake. Finds Dalton Scone, the rookie's 16th touchdown catch of the year. The Bombers set a club record with their 15th win of the year, 24 to 9. The Lions host Calgary in this week's West semifinal. Well, another week, another title for Felix Oje Alassim, the 22 year old Canadian, hottest player on planet Earth, rolled to his third ATP title in as many weeks. He rolled over Denmark's Holger Rune, 6-3-7-5 in the final of the ATP 500 Swiss Indoors in Basel, Switzerland. Jonas Dennis Shapovalov also made the final of the event in Vienna before dropping a three-sets decision to top-seeded Daniel Medvedev. A big win for Canada's rising swimming sensation, Summer McIntosh. The 16-year-old from Toronto struck gold in the women's 400-meter freestyle at the World Cup. Canadian record time of 3 minutes, 52.8 seconds. She edged out American legend Kitty Ledecky. It was Harness Racing's greatest, biggest weekend. The $7 million Breeders' Crown Series at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Working on a mystery, moving up on cover, this is the plan. In the open pace, the big boys, led by Bulldog Hanover, the world record holder, Trained and owned by Jack Darling, this is a true superstar, folks, and he showed us why. Dexter Dunn, who had an unbelievable weekend, took Bulldog Hanover into the lead at the half and never looked back, pulling away. Let's get the call to the finish from Ken Middleton. Back in the second fully extended is Alleywag Hanover. Tattoo artist scrambles for race track lead on the outside third. It is Bulldog Hanover. He is... He is Opening up in deep stretch now to a five-length lead, and it's Bulldog Hanover, a crowning moment on Canadian soil for Bulldog Hanover, and he's home in 146 and four, a stakes record performance, and he's tied the track and Canadian record. He felt great tonight, you know. Um, you know, the deflections were fast, but we had a good helmet, you know, until we went to the back streets after the first quarter, and when he marched on there, got in the front, and uh, you know, he grabbed hold of me like he, he has most of the year in his big miles, and uh, gave me a lot of confidence coming in that last turn. The pressure going into this race for me was excruciating him I mean of the fans all the fans and like I just wanted him to win so badly for the for the fans turning for home again uh, same scenario as last time you're on the lead Alleweg Hanover on your back but when you start started to see him step away how did that feel oh it felt so good when we started to step away I, I felt really good about it I knew he was right back to himself and uh, I, I've seen him do it so many times that I'm kind of counting on him yeah widening out the lead to four in the open trot yes Dexter Dunn guided the favorite Eckery D to the easy victory 99 to one shot Amigo Volo a second for a $255 exacto the three-year-old Colt Pace was expected to be the big showdown between North American Cup champ Pebble Beach and Little Brown Jug winner by the missile but this was all Pebble Beach with Todd McCarthy in the buggy pulling away in the stretch for an easy victory awesome Colt trained by Noel Daly for Patricia Stable I did it my way with second by the missile, got up for third. In the three-year-old Philly pace, the favorite Nikki Hall had the lead most of the way, but watch out for Boudoir Hanover and Treacherous Dragon. Great race, and it's Scott Zeron and Treacherous Dragon getting the job done. Nancy Tactor, the trainer, owned by Hot Lead Farm. Three-year-old Colt Trot. This was no contest as Mark McDonald king got a king of the north, wire to wire, destroying the, the field in 150 and two, a Canadian track and king stakes record. Ray Schnitker trains and owns this amazing Colt. 
In the three-year-old Philly trot, it was Jiggy Jog, driven by Dexter Dunn and trained by Oka Schwanstad, 151 and 1, a stakes track and Canadian record, ton with an unbelievable four Breeders' Crown victories. He had quite the productive weekend. A massive upset in the two-year-old Colt Pace. Ammo, a 52-to-1 shot with Dave Miller driving, held off the favorite Confederate. It was trainer Joe Holloway's fourth Breeders' Crown title in this division. It was a two-to-one favorite special way in the two-year-old Philly trot in a time of 152 even, a track and Canadian record, holding off Walner Payton. Ocus von Stepp, the driver and trainer for owner George Siegel and Marvin Katz. In the two-year-old Philly Pace, $800,000 plus, Sylvia Hanover captured the two-year-old Philly Pace in a blistering 151-1. and one. Bob McClure in the buggy looked like she might get boxed in, but she found some room, and Sylvia Hanover walked to her seventh straight win. Sean Stacy trains for Hudson Farms. The two-year-old Colt Trot, a hotly contested affair. Gaines Hanover overcame a slow start. The locally owned Colt charged down the stretch and was able to slip past the favorite celebrity Gambino. Louis Waugh drove the winner, his first Breeders' Crown victory, trained by Richard Moreau. But what a weekend it was. Okay, time now for our shot of the week. Ian Doig at number 12 at Tangle Creek for an ace. Is fifteenth. God damn it! Four. Hole in one. Twelve hole. Oh. <laughs> wow. oh my god! Number fifteen, boy. Holy Number fifteen. Oh my god! Impressive, Ian. Way to go, man. Way to go. Way to go. Let me take a snapshot. Here. <laughs> Way to go, boss. Today's environmental tip, reduce the electricity you use. Use energy efficient light bulbs instead of regular light bulbs. They last longer, which will save you money. Make sure that you turn off the lights, the TV and other appliances when you're not using them. And lower your air conditioning or heat settings when it's not necessary. Open your windows when fall arrives and wear more layers of clothing rather than cranking up the heat. RICOM, passionate people who turn complicated business problems into simplified technology solutions for public and private sector real estate, properties, portfolios, and enterprise customers. Optimize and future-proof smart buildings from the ground up. The latest in fault locating, base building network design, managed services, cybersecurity, data analytics. Our fault detection will support all smart strategies define projected outcomes for capital planning, and reduce environmental impact. RICOM, smart protection solutions. At RICOM, we're building a path to a smart and environmentally friendly future. And we want to thank all the folks who make this show possible. These are friends, trusted business associates, and all around great folks. We highly recommend them all. A reminder, this show is available on Spotify, iTunes, Breaker, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, as well as the Spanglish Network, Zingo TV, and Buzz TV Live. Also, you really want to check out our YouTube channel, folks. There are past shows available, weekly sportscasts, all kinds of cool segments and features, sites, highlights, like and subscribe. It's free. Thanks once again to the Wilcox Brothers for being on the program. Thank you for watching. Join us next week when we unveil the great myth of hockey. We'll see you then. Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show is brought to you by Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. Let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family in your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did 905-686-5678. Do you want to buy or sell a home? Could 31 years of real estate experience help you? Why not speak to an amazing team that loves to over-promise and over-deliver? 
Aldo has a tremendous team of experts on staff. They are committed to making your next real estate transaction smooth and comfortable. Call 416-GET-ALDO or visit getaldo.com. MNP, a leading Canadian national accounting, tax, and business accounting firm. MNP proudly serves and responds to the need of their clients in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors. Through partner-led engagements, MNP provides a collaborative, cost-effective approach to do business and personal strategies to help people and organizations to succeed across the country and around the world. With local offices in Oshawa, Mississauga, Burlington, and more, their team is here to support you. Visit mnp.ca today to learn more. Hi, I'm Joe Tilly. This November, join me and my wife, Penny Claire, for a trip of a lifetime. Two weeks in Egypt and Jordan. Imagine yourself riding a camel beside the Great Pyramids, cruising the Nile River, viewing the temples at Abu Simbel, exploring the desert at Wadi Rum, visiting the ancient city of Petra, and swimming in the world-renowned Dead Sea. Only $41.99 all-inclusive, with direct flight from Toronto, free upgrade to five-star hotels, and the cruise. Visit tripopo.com and book today to get an extra $100 room bonus credit. Let's travel.